The first step of safety planning is recognizing warning signs. So what lets you know that you're being triggered? Or what lets you know that you're beginning to have a difficult time? For some people that may look like their thoughts starting to go in a particular direction, maybe going in a negative direction where we're starting to think and believe that no one wants us, that no one loves us or cares about us. It may mean that we are having a lot more anxious thoughts. So really analyzing, overanalyzing everything we say and others say. It might be falling into some old unhelpful behaviors like binge eating or isolating ourselves or maybe turning to drugs and alcohol. Everyone's warning signs are different and unique to them. For women with PMDD, when that ovulation comes around, the luteal cycle comes around, may, they may start to feel some warning signs that are physical in nature. So some women start to get crampy or start to bloat, those kinds of things. Our shoulders might get more and more tense, our jaws might clench up. Those are some good physical warning signs that let us know, hey, I need to really take care of myself and nurture myself right now because things might get a little hard over the next few days. So some warning signs are physical in nature, some are emotional, some are relational. And then we want to use our internal coping strategies. So those are things that we can do on our own without needing support from other people. So that might be breathing techniques, going for a walk, drinking a cup of tea, taking a bath, those kinds of internal coping strategies. Thinking through our thoughts in a way that's helpful. So maybe using some cognitive behavioral therapy techniques. The next step is to use social contacts for distraction and support. So this doesn't necessarily mean that you share with someone what's happening for you. It just means that you reach out to others or go into spaces where you're not completely alone. So that might be, you know, I went for a walk, but I'm still feeling really triggered or I'm just not feeling very great. And I feel like this is escalating. So that might mean actually going to a coffee shop or a bookstore just to be around other people, even if you don't speak with them. It might mean calling a friend and talking about something very benign like the weather or talking about the last book you read. So it's not necessarily sharing that you're having a hard time, though you can. This step is more about getting out of isolation and being around other people. It's also distracting ourselves so that we just take a break from the chaos for a minute so that we can clear our head. The next aspect of this safety plan is contacting family members or friends who can help. So this is when we actually reach out and say, hey, I'm having a hard time. This is what's going on for me. I need your support right now. And so it's very important that we think through who are the safe people in our lives who can actually support us in that moment. We don't wanna reach out to a family member or a friend who's actually gonna make the situation worse. Some people may not have family members or friends who they can reach out to for support. They might not have safe people in their lives. And so for some people, they just need to completely skip this step and move to the next, the next step, which is contacting professionals. So this could include someone reaching out to a peer support line or a crisis line. It might mean reaching out to a therapist or a faith leader, but it's someone who's in a helping position, who's in a professional position to provide support, someone that isn't um, a family member or friend. The last aspect of this safety plan is reducing potential for using lethal means. So many times when people actually complete suicide, it's been, it's a pretty impulsive act. Let's say someone has been thinking about suicide in the past and they're having a hard time right now, 
all of a sudden their thoughts really go towards suicide. They feel that maybe there is no other option to get past their pain. If they have lethal means in their vicinity, in their home, it's more likely that they could die by suicide. And so we wanna reduce the potential that someone would use lethal means. So that might be a gun, a knife. It also could mean um, if someone has been stockpiling medications. So the safety plan includes recognizing our warning sign. What are those things that let us know that we're starting to have a hard time and need to take good care of ourselves? We use our internal coping strategies to be good and kind to ourselves, to nurture ourselves. And then we use social contacts to distract ourselves and just get some support, some subtle support. So getting out of isolation, being around other people. And then we go to the fourth step of contacting someone and letting them know we're having a hard time. So a family member or a friend. And then if that's not as helpful as we need it to be, we go to the level of contacting a professional for support. That could be a peer support provider, a crisis line, a therapist, a faith leader. And then beyond that, we need to make sure that we're reducing the potential for someone to use lethal means like a gun or a knife to harm themselves.